confused by what had occurred. There was only one who could comfort him to help him see the light. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have often come across the false impression that religion should always be serious, with no space for humor. But our speaker is affectionately known as the funny Sheikh, Sheikh Yusuf Estes. His humorous and light-hearted approach is to bring religious teachings to a level where they can be enjoyed by the young and the old alike, without fear or intimidation. He was raised in a strong Christian home and had soon become an active preacher of the Bible before finally being guided by God Almighty, the man who made his transition from musical harmony to religious harmony. Amongst his many talents is his mesmerizing approach and dedication to the spreading of peace. He also served as a delegate to the United Nations Peace Summit for religious leaders and U.S. federal chaplain. This puts him in a unique position to analyze peace from a global perspective. I have also observed that many people seem to think that religion has no place for technology. But Sheikh Yusuf Estes has harnessed the internet and other technologies to get closer to a broad audience of keen enthusiasts with several hundreds of online websites he has also been instrumental in launching the Guide Us TV project, with several Islamic shows and events being telecasted daily. He is also regularly aired on the world's most famous Islamic channel, Peace TV, with over 100 million viewers. This is besides his numerous lectures in different countries, and I am delighted to state that one of those captivating lectures is set to be here right now. Please welcome me to join Sheikh Yusuf Estes for his talk on the topic Islam, the religion of peace. Sheikh Yusuf Estes. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sabi ajma'in wa sharu ilaha ilaha illallah wa atu la shrikullah wa asharu muhammadin abdahu wa rasul Ya ayu ladhina amanu wa taqallah haqtu qatihi wa la tamutuna illa wa antum muslimun wa atasimu bihadillahi jami'a wa la tafaraku Alhamdulillah, these words that I just quoted to you from the Holy Quran spell a message that can help us understand one of the problems that human beings face and the solution to that problem to help bring inner peace inside of every single human. Here is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, tells the believers, O oh, you who have come to faith, have taqwa or a shield against Allah's wrath as it's his right that you have this taqwa. And do not die in, except in a state of total submission and peace with Almighty God. No, it's kind of easy to say it, but it's another thing to do it. And what he does, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the very next verse, he spells out one of the problems that all of us suffer from. He says, and bihablillahi. hold tight, all of you, to the hubble, the rope of Allah. Jamia, together. Wallah tafarku. And don't separate. Don't divide yourselves up into groups. Don't become broken off away from the main group. Our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he warned us about this subject. And he mentioned the people before us had made this same wrong calculation, the same mistake. 
He told us that as the Jews and Christians had divided themselves up into 71 or 72 groups, no matter how many, you Muslims, you're going to divide up even more. But then look what he said. And all of them will wind up going to hell. All of these groups, Ibn the Wahid, except for only one, the one that my companions and I are on today. This is why we hear so many times the Muslims say we are Muslims on the Quran and the Sunnah. We mean by that we want to be what Muhammad and his companions were on at that time so that we don't wind up being in a schism or some group that's off the mainstream of Al-Islam. I'm just one little human being like every one of us. My experience of coming to Islam was a very beautiful one. But at the same time, I observed some things around me that were rather strange. It reminded me of when I was a Christian because I had seen the Christians divide up. When I was a young boy, our church, which used to be called the Christian Church across the United States, divided and it became Church of Christ and Disciples of Christ. Because we moved away from the area, we went to the only church there was, which was Disciples of Christ. About two years later, we went back to visit our old friends. Do you know they wouldn't even talk to us? They said, you're with them. You're not with us anymore. And I couldn't understand what did they mean. After I grew up, I came to know about another schism or a split in one of the churches in Chicago. This happened in the 1930s, early 30s. Maybe, what is that, about 80 years ago, isn't it? Somebody opened up the subject in that church about Adam. We all believe that Adam is the first man. So they were saying that everybody after Adam has what we call belly button. You know, for the stomach where it hooks to the mother, you know? But some of them said, well, Adam, he didn't have one because he didn't have a mother. But the other group said, oh, yes, he did have one because he's a normal human being like all of us. So this started a big argument. One side of them is saying, he has no belly button. The other side is saying, yes, he has a belly button. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. No, yes, no, yes. And it was in the newspaper. They started fighting. And in the newspaper it said, the church of Adam has a belly button <laughs> against the church of Adam doesn't have a belly button are fighting each other. I wish that this was just a joke, but it's not. But I want to learn a lesson from other people's mistakes. And Christians also, as well as Jews, are aware of the damages that come when we divide up and turn against each other. A Baptist preacher once told me a story, and it's only a story, but it drives home a point to make you think. He said that there were two men who met in the airport somewhere in Europe, and they started talking to each other that you speak English. Yes, I'm from America. Oh, me too. Me too. So, uh, where are you from in America? Texas. Me too. Me too. I'm from Texas. What city? Dallas. Me too. I'm from Dallas. Me too. Hmm. So, uh, what religion are you? That I'm a Christian. Well, I am too. 
So what kind of Christian are you? Are you a Catholic or a Protestant? Said I'm a Protestant. Me too. Me too. So uh, which kind of Protestant are you? Said I'm a Baptist. Me too. Me too. Are you a hard shell or soft shell Baptist? Said hard shell. Me too. Me too. So, uh, are you a born again? He said, yeah, I am. He said, me too. Good. So, which church do you go to? He said, I go to the First Baptist Church downtown Dallas. Hey, me too. Really? Do you sit in the back of the church or the front of the church? He said, I sit in the back. Oh, me too. You sit on the right side or the left side? He said, I sit on the left side. Okay, you're one of those. For the following deal, following deal. Do not commit any sins for one week. In return, you'll be given one billion dollars. billion dollars. Will you commit any sins? Of course not. Of course not. So what about the infinitely better deal we already have? Paradise. 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 We proclaim our ultimate goal is the hereafter, everlasting paradise with our Lord. But are we truthful? But are we truthful? Is this goal reflected in our daily actions? If not, why? Why? Why are we heedless and not actively living our lives for our hereafter? How can you change? And what can you do to jumpstart your heart and your life? This is Dr. Jonathan Casalas. And for answers, tune in to live your life on purpose. You created the universe. Find out the true reason for our existence to choose the path of true success in Live Your Life on Purpose. Tonight at 11.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulated scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom what is the truth and who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Right. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik next on Peace TV. from this story that the shaitan, the devil, will stop at nothing to have us divide again and again more and more. And what is the benefit to the human being when we divide like that? 
There are many kinds of divisions that we have when we're introduced to this world. Now, our Lord and Creator has told us in the Quran in chapter 49, Surah al hujurat that He created all of us from a single pair, Adam and Eve. From them came their children and their children and tribes and nations. And He said, he made us different so we could recognize each other. And this is true. If we see someone approximate height, size, color of his skin, the shape of his face, his eyes, we can say, you know, I think this man, maybe he's Japanese, maybe he's Korean, maybe he's from this part of Thailand, maybe he's this part of India. This man maybe looks like he's from Africa, perhaps the west side of Africa. Another man, he looks like he's from Turkey. And oh, this gentleman over here, I'm sure he's from Germany. And that person, oh, Norwegian, I'm sure. And those people, ah, oh, everybody knows them. Those are the guys from America, the original Red Indians. Yeah, we know. And we do that. There's nothing wrong with recognizing something like that. The problem comes, and we all know this, when one group claims to be better than another group. We know again from Islam that Allah tells us that it is not the outer person that impresses the law. It is not our color. It is not our stature. It's the heart. And to set the tone properly for this beautiful convention, I feel that it's very important to mention the importance of the heart. If you want to find true peace, must begin in the heart. The brain can only go so far and do so much. And when the brain gives up, that's when the heart can take over. Allah speaks to us about the heart in so many ways, not the least of which we find in Surah Ra'ad, chapter 13, verse 28, when Allah says, Verily, in the remembrance of Allah, do the hearts find this rest. In the remembrance of Allah, hearts will find this rest. The true peace and rest that comes from that security we spoke of a little earlier has to begin. From the heart you speak to your Lord. Sometimes, and those who know me, sometimes we can be given to a lot of oration, speeches, tuck, 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 you know, we can do that. And I used to do that when I was in the entertainment business, music, preaching, musical instruments, all this. And before, when we had Thanksgiving, we would bring the turkey out, and I would say the prayer. Oh, I would have a big prayer, prayer and prayer, asking and talking and thanking, and it's Thanksgiving. And people would be punching me with their elbow. The food is getting cold, you know? But when I said the most important prayer of my life, I only had three words. And I couldn't think of anything else to say. And I didn't have to say them out loud because I said it in my heart. After spending three months with a Muslim, trying to convert him to become a Christian, I had observed his character. I had seen his akhlaq, his behavior. I had understood 
that a person could actually live their religion instead of just talk about it. And I kept thinking, I want to be like that. I don't want to change my religion, but I would like to find the peace that this man has. I would like to have that assuredness in my heart, that confidence that you have when you know what your purpose is. And I had gone through many things. Some of you have probably heard the stories on the internet or television. But the biggest part came when he looked at me and he told me that he was ready to go to my religion as a Christian. If, he said, if your religion is better than my religion. I felt like I have him. You know, in Christianity, you don't have to pray five times a day. You don't have to fast the month of Ramadan. You don't have to make hajj. You don't have to pay zakah. In fact, there's not much you have to do to be a Christian. But then he continued. He said, I will go to your religion. It's better than my religion. But you need proof. Proof. He said, man, religion's about faith, not proof. He told me, Islam, we have both. Have faith, we have the proof to back it up. I said to him, Do you mean to sit there and tell me, as a Muslim, you can prove that there really is God? He said, You mean to tell me, Christian? You can't. Shocked. I couldn't. I didn't have proof. We just keep talking about have faith, have faith, just believe. Don't ask too many questions. But in Islam, we have solid evidence. First is the aql, the common sense. Everything in Islam works with your common sense. You don't have crazy things going on. Number two, have the existence of the Quran itself. It still is recited today as it was recited at the time of Muhammad. And number three, you have the Sahih Hadith to back up everything of details. And it doesn't change. There are not two versions of Sahih Bukhari. There are not two different versions of Sahih Muslim. And certainly there are not two versions of the Quran. By looking into this and observing this man and his way, I was forced to come a very important decision. I had to find a way to do this religion, but how could I do it without offending my father, who was a minister, by the way, ordained minister, offending my wife, a born-again Christian, or offending the people I work with and certainly offending the people that I've been witnessing to, preaching to, how can I do it? And so this was a big discussion he and I was having. Then he told me something. He said, it is not about you and me. It's not about you and your father, you and your wife, you and your congregation, or you and your friends, or you and the business people you know. This is only about you and your Lord. 
So you need to stop talking to me. Talk to him. Huh? That's it. Yeah. If there really is a God, go talk to him. Tell him. I was thinking, what? Where would I start? What would I say? Hmm. But that is what I did. But I had been watching this Muslim making his salah, making his sajda. I said, let me try that. And I put my head down on the ground, or my head on the ground, I said these words. God guide me. Stepped inside his home, he was overwhelmed with fear. An angel came with words from God. Things were still unclear Saying read, read But he could not read Amazing words that he heard A trembling deep inside his heart Confused by what had occurred There was only one Who could comfort him To help him see the light To ease his fears To reassure was Khadija